like you ever felt. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Time to film, boys! Brap gang, heavy arty cat, we're here. We're riding, we're sliding. Rob's on the Polaris, Josh is back out here. I'm back out here, because last weekend I was sick. It's cold, right about negative five right now. Whew. 80 miles on the old kitty. So it's time for the ZR6000RR review. Uh, we've had it out here three times now. Uh, I rode it once the first time we came out, then the second time I didn't ride it at all. We were just, uh, it was a bit of a rush day, so this is my second real ride on it. Um, I'll start with some of the pros, I think. Number one, I think the sled is awesome looking. I like the looks of my assault, obviously from like the side, but from the front it's a little too skinny. Um, I think it just it doesn't quite give it that perfect aesthetics. Whereas this, it, it's a little hippier. It's got some nice some nice lines to it, and uh, I think in general it's pretty uh, it's a good looking sled. Number two, the flat cornering. It's got a very wide ski stance, so it they, it, it corners super flat, like. As you can see, you know, you accelerate into it and it's not going to lift the, the uh, inside ski, which I think is awesome. It's got a little bit more body around you, so it deflects the wind even with this relatively short windshield. You don't get as much uh, wind hitting you. It's got a nice mid-range, which I think is awesome. Uh, the nice thing is if you're going, like right now we're going around 35, it's it's right there, it's in the power. Um, slower than that, I would say it, it doesn't, you know, quite get up off the start as quickly as like the 800 does, obviously. But I still give it a lot of credit, I think it's pretty good. It's got some uh, very good stand-up ergonomics as well. Pretty much as good as the Assault. It has a little higher riser to kind of uh, compensate for the lower center of gravity, but still an awesome, uh, awesome setup for standing. The 1.25 rip saw on it is actually, uh, it gets really good traction. For not being studded, this sled does not get loose really at all. Uh, I give it a lot of credit for that. I don't know if that's the design of the sled with the slide action rear suspension, being able to put the power down. No, not lift itself off of the uh, snow or if it's the track, but either way, the sled definitely puts the power to the snow very well. But you gotta give it credit, it's a good looking machine, you know what I mean? The, I like the front suspension, it's pretty decent. Uh, the rear suspension's nice and soft, so uh, you're always feeling nice and cushy. So now some of the cons. Number one, I think the seat's a little low on it. Um, I'm obviously coming from an axis, which is a sled with a very high center of gravity. But uh, I still think that it could have a slightly taller seat. Um, it would be 
a bit better off in general. I'm just a little tall for it, so I'm a little hunched over. Uh, maybe if you're a shorter rider, you'll fit on it better, but that's just my uh, opinion. There's the whole fit and finish thing. Uh, obviously, everybody rips on Articats for the fit and finish. I could see it. You know, I could, I could definitely give that to everybody. Uh, as you get more acquainted with the sled, the little, the little gremlins kind of uh, start to get at you after a while. Number one, the gauge moves around slightly. The bolts seem tight. I'll have to look at it this summer, but it kind of jiggles. Uh, it doesn't seem to be coming loose really, but just kind of is what it is. See, like that is just obnoxious, and it's it's this that's doing it. You can see it kind of jiggle around. The throttle has a little play in it, which I think is uh, very weird, but kind of a typical Articat thing. The F6 that we had before did it as well. The side panel design is trash. I will say it's the worst design of side panel ever. Uh, they're very difficult to get back on. You're kind of just forcing them into the places that they have to go, bending the panels a lot. I'm amazed they don't break more than they do, and who knows, they might. I haven't researched it that much. But, uh, and then where the oil tank is placed, you can't really see it. It's got, like, a metal casing around it, so you, you gotta look down in it, and you have to pull part of the panel back to, uh, be able to oil it. It's just a pain in the ass. Number... I don't even, can't call it number three, but next, uh, it didn't come with hand guards, which I think is insane. My hands are quite cold right now. Um, I should have bought some for it, but I haven't found any I really like, so haven't gone that route yet, but I will. I don't like the ski tips on these. They're very hard to grab, and it kind of, like, the angle of them, it, like, pinches your hand when you really need to move it around kind of hurts it so I don't know if they did it for just aesthetics but essentially that's what it seems like and probably my last big real gripe with it is uh the grab bars on the front and back, they're, the way they're painted, they're very slippery. And uh, the one on the back, there's just nowhere really to put your hands in it to grab it. So, it's not the best for that. But, uh, whoo! Wow, my hands are cold. I would say in general for what I paid for this sled, I don't regret it at all. Um, as I've said many times, in this price range, you're, you know, you're used XRS money, probably more like Rev XS chassis XRS. You're definitely not getting a Gen 4, maybe an XP even. Um, so I would rather have a new sled personally, uh, but you know, in general, I'm a pretty big fan of it. How are you guys not cold? Yeah, one's low, one's high. Middle is off. So when you center it like that, that's off. They're both three, that's why I'm confused. I think left is low and right is high. Yeah, I'm not cold enough. Sick, dude. You got those good gloves, too. I know. I bet. Uh, no, I think it's just. There's no hand guards on that, and the wind was just shooting at them. Yeah, they could probably go right here. Josh bought white hand guards and they don't fit his slide, so I told him if he can't take them back, I'll buy them off him. How'd you like the ride, Rob? I liked it. It, it turns a lot flatter than mine. Mine's kind of tippy. Yeah, it's because of these skis. It wasn't tippy before I put the skis on. But it didn't actually turn before I put the skis on, so it's like 6 of 1. Uh, you always want to aim it more up than you think. You just aim it where you think, because... <laughs> yeah, that should be good. Hopefully. Or it's just the sky. You want to lead for a little bit? I'm going to follow it. 
I'd be interested to ride a, uh, a Sidewinder or a Viper and see if they did anything with the fit and finish on those because I know Arctic Cat assembles them for Yamaha so be curious to see if they uh, allow like the looser throttle and the gauge issues and stuff or if that's something that uh, Yamaha kind of like nips in the bud. The gauge is pretty decent though it's obviously not quite as uh, good as the one on the Assault, which isn't even the best. The PIDD is an even better one, obviously. But uh, I just have the the standard gauge. This one, the screws are just a little small. They're they're okay. The numbers are nice and big, but I feel like when you're trying to find certain things, like your engine temp and stuff, you're you're kind of looking a little too long, just because they had to kind of work it in under the main things, like the engine uh, RPMs and your uh, miles per hour. carbides they put on these seem to work really well there's not I guess there's a little darting but uh, in general they don't get caught up in grooves or anything like that unrelated topic can I just say the dumbest comment I've ever gotten was one of the ones I got this week and it said your sled didn't start because it's a piece of shit should have got electric start who pays eight grand for a sled and it doesn't get electric start let me just say if you like electric start that is all all you. I am all about everybody should have what they want on their sled. There is nothing wrong with that at all. You want to put a touring sled, a touring seat on an XRS? It's your, it's your cup of tea. Do I think it makes a lot of sense? You know, whatever. I have my opinions. With electric start, if you want it, get it. I don't want it. It's just something I've had and I, I didn't love it. Uh, I had an issue with the uh, starter catching on the, the ring gear that started it. And it just was more work than I wanted. For an entire season, the battery was dead because I just didn't feel like replacing it. And I just pull started the slide. Like, for me, it's not my thing. I would, wouldn't care if it was on a slide when I bought it, but I wouldn't look for it. So, you know, I hope everybody that watches my channel understands one of the biggest things I preach is you should have this slide the way you want it. Because it's your sled and that's all that matters. Whatever brain you get, whatever skis you put on it, whatever stud you, you know. If you like it, you like it. And that's just kind of the positivity I want to get out there in the snowmobile community. I want people to see that it's not about brand bashing and, you know, should have done this, should have done that. If you have, if you have real positive feedback to give me, I am more than well, willing to hear it, you know. If... I start to decide I hate the skis I put on and you guys, you know, you tell me, oh, I told you you should have done this. I'll totally say you're right. I appreciate the constant support that you guys give me. I mean, you guys are the, the greatest. The amount of positivity in my comments is amazing. And uh, that's why, you know, I put a lot of my time and a lot of my money into bringing you guys these videos and I'll keep doing it. And I just want to say thanks to everybody that, uh, that helped support me. Back to this kitty though. I do like, I feel like I can hook my feet pretty good and really hang off it, which I think is nice. And the seat's stiff in the places that I need it to be when I do that going through a corner, which is cool. And you can almost tell it's sort of shaped that way for you, for you uh, to kind of push yourself into it as you rail a corner. And I will say one of the one of my final things I don't like about it, it's very, very hard to start for a 600. Not not with like the gas issue, but the engine turns over hard. You really gotta give it some muscle. It's starting to loosen up a bit more now. And I think maybe 
as it gets more miles, it'll it'll become easier starting. But back on to the electric start thing. If you're the type of person that doesn't really like to rail on a sled to pull it over, this is probably harder than my 800 to start. So if you do go for it, keep that in mind. It may be a sled to put electric start on, just for that reason. This is definitely not a wheelie sled though, so if that's your goal, this ain't the one for you. I knew someone would do that. Left Josh behind, huh? <laughs> How do you like the 800 power on a straight trail? It's crazy, isn't it? You can't keep the fucking front on the ground. I can't, at least. Ooh, it is cold today. It's negative 28 up here this morning. Luckily, we were not here yet. I don't often shout out my Instagram until the uh, end of the video, so I got, I'll uh, talk about that now for once. I'm doing something on it. If you didn't know, I have a Rev Rider 550 Instagram, if you're into that. And uh, every Friday, I feature one of your guys' sleds. So uh, if you want to participate in that, go over and give it a follow. And um, direct message me a picture of your sled. Try to make it like a raw picture, not like a... A, like a, a chat picture because I have to screenshot those and they don't really they don't look as good and I've been thinking about uh, making a type of decal kind of if you're into the channel and you want to show a little support um, I think it'd be a cool way to do it I'm kind of throwing around the idea in the last couple videos I, I kind of like say what's up Brap Gang it does kind of something cool uh, it'd be a lot cooler if I had a can and I could actually feel like I represent it but, uh, yeah, so if that's also something anybody's interested in, throw a comment down below. Let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing, uh, some sort of decal that you guys could buy to kind of show that you're into the channel, you know. I can make them smaller, I can make them bigger. But, uh, first and foremost, I just wanted to know if anybody would even be interested in that. So, let me know. And if you think it's stupid, that's fine too. It's good to know. <laughs> well, backfire never hurt anybody. Backfire. <laughs> Don't rev. How are your hands? Better. My thumb's a little cold, but that's pretty much it. They got cold. Yeah. That's all the straightaways that get you.